Danielle, as someone who is now a CTO and who's done this for many years and is working, I'm sure, to create programs to attract, you know, different kinds, you know, to keep and re- to a- attract, retain talent. What is this, you know, what, what is this, what does the data mean to you? What, what does it say to you? And also, I'm curious from everyone, millennials, Generation Z, they want different things then, you know, Xers want, um, how does that factor into this? Yeah, I mean, the data, like you said, is sobering, and I would take it one step further. I think if we broke it down, I know, at least in my firm, um, by equity and non-equity shareholders, those or partners, those two levels, we're going to see even, you know, larger gaps and, and bigger distinctions. And, you know, Laura touched on this, but I really think at a high level, um, women, don't, when I talk to them, they don't see it. They don't want it. They're less excited. They wonder if it's worth it. They feel like they can't do it all. And in some instances, they feel like they don't know how. So they're opting out. And that's what we really, you know, want to combat is, you know, making this something that is very accessible, that is appealing, um, that, that, you know, we can inspire women to be change agents. And to do that, we got to get more women in the partnership ranks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something I'll just add, just to add some dimension to this, there certainly is a component of opting out, but particularly for women of color, it's often not a matter of opting out. And right. so the reasons women of color leave law firms will often vary. And so I know there's some statistics out there um, that Erin Reeve, she's the CEO of an organization called Next Nextions, about so particularly like Black women tend to be the primary breadwinner in their households, second to white men. And so oftentimes that narrative of like all the women are leaving to have babies is not the case for the majority, and particularly not the case for women of color. And so I think. Um, Danny, what you said is absolutely right, but I did just want to add that that nuance that we can't globalize that that right. narrative. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just to touch on something Alexis, you know, mentioned about how um, the organic development of relationships happens in law firms. You know, I, I don't think we're ever going to get a, to a point where those relationships are eradicated because. I mean, that is the practice of law. That's how, you know, that's how you bring junior lawyers up to being senior lawyers and how they develop the skill set to build their own practice. But I think the focus really needs to be on how those relationships develop. And before law firms kind of sat back and allowed them to happen organically. And I think now you're really going to have to see a lot more intervention um, by the firms to really, you know, take a role in helping build relationships um, between the current existing shareholders and their high performers, you know, women and diverse attorneys. I, I know that overall, we have to get far more intentional about work allocation and staffing. Yeah. And so something I talk a lot about is systems and, you know, mentorship programs are great and sponsorship programs are fine. Um, but I work really close, closely with my chief legal talent officer to focus on the ways that we can elevate those talent management systems to have more equitable distributions of work. And obviously, if we're talking, you know, senior associates or, at, you know, at my firm senior counsel, that's going to look different. But doing what we can to systematize. Um, just the other day, I, I shared a quote on LinkedIn by James Clear that's, and where he says, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. And so generally what we all are doing as large law firms is we have some like really great goals that we've written down about women and ethnic and racial minorities and LGBTQ and veterans and people with disabilities, but ultimately we don't have systems in place. And so I think you're right, Stephanie, we've lost those those sort of more impromptu, organic, maybe affinity group driven opportunities. Um, But my hope is that we're working to close the gap by more heavily relying on talent management systems, but it's been really hard. Like we can't, we haven't pivoted on a dime. I think all of our organizations have had a lot of conversations with um, the women at our firms, with the women's networks and mobilized to do what we can to support them. But it's hard, like it's, it's frankly, it's been very hard.